In this video, a one-piece AMO Technus multifocal lens has been placed in the capsular bag. Then viscoelastic is used to expand the ciliary sulcus until the anterior capsule edge is visible. Then a Rycroft 30 gauge cannula is advanced through the inferior zonules from its tip to its 45 degree bend, which is approximately 4 millimeters. Then 0.2 cc's of trimoxivanco is slowly injected into the anterior vitreous. In this next case, a LensTech HD monofocal lens is placed into the capsular bag. Only a small amount of viscoelastic is placed in the bag in order to avoid overexpanding it. Then the ciliary sulcus is expanded with viscoelastic until the anterior capsular edge is visible. Then a Rycroft 30 gauge cannula is advanced into the sulcus through the zonules by posteriorly rotating and slightly depressing the tip of the cannula. 0.2 cc's of trimoxivanco is infused into the vitreous and confirmation of proper placement is achieved when the plume of TMV is seen in the vitreous. The next video demonstrates the use of trimoxivanco in the presence of a traumatic zonular dehiscence which is present from 10 to 12 o'clock in this surgical view. An 11 millimeter capsule retention ring is retracted into the delivery device and is released into the capsular bag, thus stabilizing the area of zonular disruption. Then removal of cortex is then achieved by centripetal and tangential manipulation of the IA handpiece in order to remove all cortex which is trapped in the fornices of the capsular bag. At this point, viscoelastic is placed into the capsular bag, being careful not to overexpand it. And then a LensTech HD monofocal lens is then delivered into the capsular bag in a controlled fashion. Then a Rycroft 30 gauge cannula is passed under the iris and over the peripheral anterior capsule in the area of the zonular dehiscence in order to deliver 0.2 cc's of trimoxivanco into the anterior vitreous. Even though there is minor reflux of the TMV into the anterior chamber, proper placement into the anterior vitreous is confirmed by the visualization of the steroid plume. The next video demonstrates a small pupil case which shows how the cannula can be used to push aside the iris in order to expose the capsular edge. A LensTech HD monofocal lens is placed into the capsular bag and then a small amount of viscoelastic is used to expand the ciliary sulcus. However, you can see that the capsule edge is barely visible. The Rycroft 30 gauge cannula is then used to push aside the iris in order to expose the capsular edge. One can confirm proper entry into the space by observing a visual and or tactile release or pop of the capsule once zonular penetration has been successfully achieved. One can also confirm proper delivery by watching for a rise in the eye wall complex as the vitreous volume expands with proper drug placement. The last case demonstrates that with experience and a widely dilated pupil Viscoelastic is not needed to expand the sulcus for TMV delivery. An AMO Technus Ziambu multifocal lens is placed into the capsular bag. The cannula then enters through the zonules by posteriorly rotating and slightly depressing the distal segment onto the peripheral capsule. This is done with clear visualization of the capsule edge. 
Once the TMV is injected into the anterior vitreous, a plume should be visible. If it is not, then the drug is either in the anterior chamber or trapped under the equatorial iris. At this point, I would repeat the injection only one time.